Last time, we explained how electricity is made, and now you know what it is. The movement of electrons through a conductor, like metal or water. You saw how dangerous electricity can be, because people are conductors too. Here's how to keep safe around high voltage. Electrical power is a factor of the number of electrons per second flowing down the line, which translates to amperage, and the amount of potential energy these electrons have, called voltage. For an analogy, think of a garden hose. The amount of water that flows is like amperage. The pressure is like voltage. The effect of the water is a product of both. Like adjusting the nozzle on a hose, amperage and voltage can be traded back and forth with transformers. Power is a product of both. High voltage alone isn't dangerous. It takes amperage. Both static electricity and piezoelectric cigarette lighters can generate thousands of volts at low amperage. Many generating plants are miles from the urban areas where most electricity is used, so power loss along the lines is a big concern. Maximizing transmission voltage is like increasing water pressure in a hose. It's the best way to push electricity long distance because it minimizes power loss. But the very high voltage coupled with high current makes these power towers some of the most dangerous parts of an electric grid. The higher the voltage, the greater the potential for electrons to leap through insulators. Rubber gloves and boots are no protection from this much electricity. The best insulator here is plenty of space. Give transmission lines and towers a wide berth. Once in the city, electricity is stepped down twice, at receiving stations, then at neighborhood distributing stations. All these stations are plainly marked with warning signs and should be avoided. Walls lost here should be abandoned. Oh, no, no, come on down from there. No, 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 you can't go up there. That's high voltage. Sometimes yeah. a phone call yeah, can get it ball. back. Yeah, the, well, the ball went over the fence. Can, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Distributing stations send power across the city to local utility poles at 4,800 volts. Here again, airspace is the best protection. Take a look at this typical pole. The lowest lines are for telephone or cable television signals, pushing along at just a few volts or less with very low amperage. But at the top, these poles still handle high voltage electricity with enough power to injure or kill somebody who gets too close. One out of five construction deaths is caused by electrocution. Let's follow these lines up the pole. Directly above the lowest level communication lines, you'll find those for secondary voltage. 120 to 240 volts. Further up the pole, you'll find primary voltage of 4800 volts. At the top of the pole, you'll find high voltage sub-transmission lines carrying up to 34,500 volts. A close look shows that these top lines aren't insulated. Why can birds perch on them? So the one thing the bird can't do is the bird can't touch a live power line at the same time in something that's grounded or he becomes a path for the electricity to get back down to ground. So for example, this energized wire right here and the pole is grounded, so the bird cannot touch here and there at the same time. In fact, you don't even have to touch a power line. If you get close enough and the voltage is high enough, the electricity will arc. I was working on some underground power lines, 4,800 volts. Maybe it just arced over and got me. The best protection here is distance. I wasn't doing anything wrong, and I got nailed. I've had several surgeries. In fact, I've had 87 surgeries. It was a long road. It didn't chuck. The guy I was with, you know, he died. I mean, and he wasn't doing anything wrong either. It should have never happened. For power lines of 50,000 volts or less, keep at least 10 feet away. If you're not sure, stay at least 18 feet away. At higher altitudes, because the air is thinner, you have to add more space. People that don't work with electricity, I think they make a lot of mistakes and I think they cut corners and, and they aren't as safe as they ought to be. There's rules that are put into place to, to keep you safe. If you take shortcuts or don't follow those rules, uh, it's like playing Russian roulette. It's nothing to goof around with. Before beginning work, construction workers who have to labor close to electric lines should locate and identify what kind of power the wires carry. So if you're building near power lines, make arrangements with the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power to move or de-energize them. It's not enough to maintain personal airspace. All equipment has got to keep the same safe distance, whether it is scaffolding 
or handheld construction material. It's not just good safety, it's the law. It's a dangerous job. A lot of the work is extremely physical, and um, you know, you never can tell. Antenna or dish installers should make sure that there is plenty of space below overhead lines. At least double the antenna height so that if it falls, it won't hit the line. This model shows you why. Install in dry weather, not when it's raining. If equipment is stored under power lines, signs should warn workers that there is danger overhead. Our power lines can actually fall down and they can remain energized. So you don't know whether they're safe or not. Sometimes they hiss and sometimes they arc and spark and sometimes they don't. But what you guys need to do is you need to remember that that power line is always energized.